As the pandemic rages on around us, it doesn't seem like there's very much you can count on these days, but during these uncertain times, there's always one thing you can rely on. The ice cream machine at McDonald's will always be broken. internet welcome to food theory the show where i scream you scream we all scream for knowledge now i know what you're all thinking matt pat you just did a theory about mcdonald's last week do you really need to do another one and it's true we here at food theory are mcfans of the golden arches but mcdonald's is arguably one of the most influential restaurants in history so you know there's gonna be a lot to say about them and they're about to make history yet again this time with their ice cream machines why are these things always broken Broken? What if I told you that there's a conspiracy behind that broken machine? An actual, fully-fledged corporate conspiracy that goes all the way up the ladder. Don't believe me? I don't blame you, but I'm gonna prove it to you anyway. Today I'm gonna soft-serve you up some history as we go on a tasty journey through McDonald's' coldest conspiracy. The intrigue around McDonald's ice cream machine started nearly two decades ago, even before there was a website that told you which McDonald's ice cream machines were broken across the country. Yep, that is a real thing if you ever want to test it out. In fact, the McDonald's ice cream machines that are in service today seem to be the exact same model that were in production back in 2003, the Taylor C602. In case time has become meaningless for you in the last couple years like it has for me, 2003, 19 years ago. So McDonald's using this model of ice cream machine would be like if we all still use the original Motorola Razor phone with no internet connectivity and barely enough texting capability to break up with your girlfriend. According to them, the reason why McDonald's has to stick with the same manufacturer and also have only one manufacturer for ice cream machines across 13,000 stores is consistency. McDonald's always has to taste like McDonald's, no matter where you go in the world, so keeping everything the same maintains that quality standard, whatever the standard of quality of McDonald's is. Unfortunately, just like you would expect if we were all still using the those same Razer phones, McDonald's employees have had a lot of issues with their die-hard Taylor C602s in the modern times. A lot of times when you go to McDonald's, they'll tell you that the machines are broken or that they're being cleaned. And I do mean a lot of times. As I write this, the broken rate for ice cream machines in my area is just about 12%, which is actually on the low end of this spectrum. New York right now is sitting at the insane 40% broken. LA, 15%. Why? Wendy's Frosty Machine isn't constantly broken. Chick-fil-A is dishing up those milkshakes left and right. Even Burger King. Burger King. Ice cream machines are functional. Though we all know that no one would ever get the ice cream there because the correct answer is the Hershey's Sunday pie. So what's going on here? Well, according to my research, the Taylor C602 is designed to make both ice cream and milkshakes. It also doesn't need to be turned off and disassembled at the end of the day. Instead, it preserves its contents and self-cleans by going through a four-hour heating cycle to kill bacteria. No manual cleaning, no waste, and no human error. Perfect if it worked. But it doesn't, it breaks all the time, and wouldn't you know it, the machine can only be serviced by a licensed Taylor repair engineer. And you can't even cheat your way around this. You can't even access the error codes on a C602 to see what's wrong. You are totally blind, which seems like a bad design decision, right? Well, yeah, bad for you, but great for Taylor. You see, Taylor, a company that makes ice cream machines, reportedly makes a whopping 25% of its revenue from service calls to fix those machines which is just a massive portion of their earnings and certainly one that they can't afford to lose. And when you actually look at these things, it's no wonder that they make so much money on maintenance. Just check out this Taylor C602 maintenance schedule. There are 16 parts on the machine that need to be replaced every three months by one of their technicians. Apparently those O-rings are not built to last. Things are made out of cotton candy. Practically everything else in here is on a six-month cycle. Can you imagine buying any piece of kitchen equipment in your home that requires this amount of attention? The bottom line is that the maintenance on this machine pretty much is Taylor's bottom line. But again, it's not answering the question. Why doesn't McDonald's just go somewhere else for better ice cream machines? Well, if my research is right, it has nothing to do with machine parts or quality of service or better ice cream. Instead, it all boils down to the stock market. McDonald's is a publicly traded company, which means that the original owners of McDonald's don't own the whole company anymore. Far from it. Instead, the company is owned by shareholders, banks, and individual investors 
investors, each with their own chunk of the company. Some big, some small. And the higher up you go in the ownership chain, the more complicated the relationship between McDonald's and Taylor gets. Now, follow me on this. McDonald's is huge, right? One of the biggest fast food chains in the world. So, as you can probably imagine, doing business with them can make or break a smaller company. And Taylor, along with its sister company Powerhouse Dynamics, have multiple exclusive products made specially for McDonald's, including, of course, the ice cream machines. As such, the success or failure of these companies is very closely tied to their relationship with the Golden Arches. When McDonald's expands, Taylor sells more equipment. When they close restaurants or people buy less McDonald's, Taylor feels that pain too. We can actually see this in the stock prices for both these companies. Taylor's parent company is Middleby Corporation, so that's whose stock price we're going to be looking at here. And as you can see, in 2020, when restaurants like McDonald's were hard hit by the pandemic at the end of February because everyone was eating at home, no one was going out, and no one was opening new restaurants with new equipment, Middleby's value tumbled too. When McDonald's lost about 30% of its value in a few days, Middleby was right behind the following week, losing 50%. Basically, what you're seeing here is evidence that the shareholders wait to see what happens to McDonald's, and then that directly affects the stock prices of Middleby. But again, how does this relate to McDonald's keeping broken ice cream machines? Well, there's one other entanglement here that we haven't talked about, which is that McDonald's and Middleby also share a number of key shareholder banks. The same big investors own a piece of both companies, meaning that their biggest investors want to see both of these companies winning, and the easiest way to do that is for them to continue working together. Comparing the top investors in each corporation, you can see that the top by far for both is the Vanguard Group, which is a massive investment company who owns tons and tons of pieces of companies across every sector all over the world. Vanguard is a big owner in both of these companies, owning 8.3% of McDonald's and over 9% of Middleby, which translates to billions of dollars that are on the line for their investors in just these two companies alone. But it's not just Vanguard. BlackRock Group comes in as the number three shareholder for both companies, Wellington Management is number four for McDonald's and number two for Middleby, and SSGA is number two and number ten. My point here is that while McDonald's and Middleby aren't the same companies, they are effectively owned by a lot of the same people, the same banks and investment companies, meaning that while they are legally separate, they're aiming to please the exact same group. People that know that Taylor is riding on the coattails of McDonald's. People who win when broken ice cream machines translate to massive repair bills, which translate to billions of dollars in the stock market. So the next time you roll up to the drive-thru at the local Golden Arches for some soft serve and get turned away, just know that you're helping to line some fat cat Wall Street investor pockets. But there is one way that all of this might end up benefiting you, and that's because this whole broken ice cream thing is tied up in the hot button debate around right to repair. For those of you who don't know, right to repair has become something of a hot button issue in recent years. It originated with automobiles, so you could take your broken car to any repair shop. Before legislation, you would only be able to go to the original manufacturer, which meant that they could charge you whatever they wanted because you weren't able to go anywhere else. At least, not without voiding your warranty. That's what's called a monopoly. So, this is where the original right to repair legislation came from. Because why shouldn't you, the owner of the car, be allowed to repair it however you choose? It's not rocket science. But historically, companies have been extremely protective about who can service their machines because, as we just saw with Taylor, they stand to make a lot of money when they have a monopoly over the ability to service their product. In recent years, we've seen right to repair pop up again as an issue in the electronics industry, covering everything from home electronics like your washer, dryer, and oven, to personal devices like your phone and computer. Apple, who up until recently refused to let third-party repair shops have access to parts or manuals to repair your phone, used to charge a ton to fix it at the Apple store. The only reason the tide has begun to change in this is because late last year, President Biden signed an executive order directing the FTC to draft new regulations limiting all this. And wouldn't you know it, the FTC has chosen to use an example company in their investigation for right to repair our very own McDonald's and their ice cream machines. You see, a few years ago, Jeremy O'Sullivan and Melissa Nelson wanted to create a delicious, deceptively bad for you frozen yogurt dessert. And they found that the heating and cooling process of the Taylor C602 was perfect for pasteurizing their product. When you're pasteurizing, the National Sanitation Foundation requires that the temperature of the yogurt be tracked. But O'Sullivan and Nelson couldn't do that on the C602 because they couldn't access any of the controls. They couldn't access the settings or the error codes without a licensed technician from Taylor. One day, after actually calling a Taylor technician, they noticed that the tech was able to access a ton of information out of the machine after entering a secret four-digit code into the control panel. A literal secret code that they had to enter into the ice cream machine. What Da Vinci Code reality are we 
living in. So O'Sullivan and Nelson followed what was clearly becoming an ARG at this point and managed to unlock the ice cream machine that they already owned by remembering and inputting this secret code. From there, they wanted to develop a way to bypass the code entirely. So they built the Kitch, an extra component that attaches to the C602 to give users live temperature readings and error codes. You know, all that stuff that you kind of need to operate the machine that you own. Kitch began selling to fast food companies all over the country, including McDonald's. So now franchise owners and managers could prevent breakdowns, stop losing revenue on ice cream that they couldn't serve, and stay out of the line of fire of angry customers. However, when Taylor got wind of what was going on, they were less than happy about it. I guess you could say that their relationship with Kitch really soured, uh, went from soft serve to hard, I don't know, editors just put in a laugh track here. Thank you, it boosts my ego. So, now Taylor was crabby about people hacking their machines. They declare that if you use a Kitch device, you void the machine's warranty. And so McDonald's releases a notice to franchisees telling them to remove Kitch from the ice cream machines because they may, quote, endanger employees. This, to me, reads as a clear instance of the two companies working together for the benefit of the shareholders. I mean, endanger employees? Yeah, all right, McDonald's. Meanwhile, those sneaky sons of guns over at Taylor go to work building the Taylor Shake Sunday Connectivity, a kit that attaches to their own machines to do the same thing that Kitch was doing. Just, you know, not as transparently and still with hidden control menus that are only accessible to Taylor engineers. A kit that also appears to have been stolen almost directly from Kitch. Taylor allegedly tried to obtain multiple Kitch devices by using fake names and addresses. Then, emails from mid-2020 show the vice president of engineering at Taylor requesting designers to make their interface fun and relevant, showing screenshots of Kitch's interface next to their own in the email itself. There were also slides from internal presentations where Kitch's interface was shown next to Taylor's, and Taylor suggested that they make, quote, similar changes. Oof, that is a big bummer there. And finally, one last tasty scoop, again thanks to Taylor's VP of Engineering, we see they asked an employee to, quote, please buy a Kitch kit and provide me a written evaluation on the hardware and software. Guys, you're, you're not allowed to do that as a big company. And now Kitch is suing Taylor for corporate espionage, stealing the trade secrets of their device. A device that gave franchise owners the power to fix their faulty machines. It gave them the right to repair. Right to repair is a threat to Taylor and to many companies who make their money off of fixing their own machines. And how this whole McDonald's ice cream investigation plays out is ultimately going to affect you and your products. In the meantime, though, the best way to combat the issue as an individual is to pick products in your house that don't require a specialty repair service. Get a Whirlpool dishwasher instead of an expensive meal. Instead of an Il Bagno Alessi dot toilet, just get a Kohler and call whatever plumber you want after you've had one too many chicken nuggets. If the FTC investigation into McDonald's brings this issue to light more, it can only mean good things for consumers, able to give their business to companies who don't sell you a broken product just so that they can microtransact you to death with service calls later. Well, I certainly do think there's a case to be made for the importance of protecting trade secrets, there's definitely a solution out there that allows us to have our ice cream and eat it too. But hey, as great great as it'll be to have all that ice cream at your fingertips, it's probably not gonna be the healthiest thing for you, which is why I'm thankful for today's sponsor, Noom. Like many of us after the holidays, I've decided to take better care of myself. I'm trying to limit the amount of desserts I'm eating to once a week, I'm trying to eat healthier at meals, I'm even trying to cut out Diet Coke. Feels like an impossible task, to be honest, but I've done it before, and I think I can do it again. And I can do it thanks in large part to the help of Noom. Noom has helped me to start my journey in a way that's gonna be healthy and sustainable in the long term. Not not just by telling me what I should and shouldn't eat, but by helping me understand the psychology behind why I eat what I eat. Then they apply cognitive behavioral therapy alongside amazing recipes, a food and exercise tracker, and a personal goal specialist and support chat to help keep me on track when, let's be honest, all I want to do is go for that late night 40 piece chicken McNugget deal after writing scripts all day. So if you want to help break those bad food habits and keep those New Year's resolutions, head on down to the description and click the top link. Noom.com slash food theory to get your free free 30 second quiz and get a personalized plan that's right for you and your health journey here in 2022. Honestly, I've always been skeptical about programs like these, but when Noom approached me last year and told me about their use of science and psychology, I was so fascinated that I wanted to give it a try. And honestly, it's been so helpful for me keeping on with all of my health goals. And here at the top of 2022, where I have a lot of resolutions that I've committed to, I haven't had a single Diet Coke yet. So if that doesn't prove something, I don't know what will. Once again, click the link down in the description below that's noom.com slash food theory. Take that free 30 second quiz and start living your best healthy life. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs>